Okay, so tell me a little bit about B3 Coffee, you know, what is it and how it got started? Sure. So B3 is a nonprofit that uses coffee to bring people together and create meaningful social and work opportunities. Um, B3 really ultimately aims to facilitate connection between people with and without disabilities in an organic way um, and ultimately advance disability justice and allyship and inclusion. And what was your other question? How did it get started? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So B3 got started um, while I was an undergrad at UNC Chapel Hill. And I was involved in a club called Best Buddies. And this club facilitates friendship between people with and without disabilities. But I noticed that the way that they went about that was really contrived and um, it seemed a little bit charity minded as well. And I'm really glad that I had that experience because it exposed me to disability community. Um, and I actually discovered my own neurodivergence through that. But uh, I thought that there has to be a better way, a, a more um, organic way, a less patronizing way to offer community to people with and without disabilities in a way that's really mutually beneficial. Um, so I was also at the time working at um, a coffee shop and seeing how coffee could bring people together. Um, and that job was really a safe space for me. It was how I formed a lot of the friendships that I had in college. Um, it gave me a sense of purpose and identity. And so I really saw coffee as a potential medium for creating a social impact in my community. And uh, we formed the nonprofit in 2020. Uh, then we were just doing pop-up coffee stands but now um, B3 has grown a lot in the past couple of years, and we are really a multidimensional organization. We, in addition to the pop-up coffee stands, which we still do as just a way to um, promote visibility and community engagement um, for people with disabilities as well as allies, we also have community programs which support the transition to adulthood for neurodivergent individuals. Um, one program is called Belonging in the Workplace. So in that class, we do resume building and interview practice and exploration of accommodations, things like that. And then our Living Your Best Life class really explores um, all things that we all should have learned in school, but didn't. <laughs> so things like budgeting and navigating adult relationships and how do you take public transit and um, how do you make simple home repairs, things like that. And then we also have quite an active social community, uh, which is both online and in person. Um, we meet regularly, uh, I'd say twice a week on average uh, for various community building events. Um, Oftentimes they'll be centered around the season or the holiday or um, always, we always have a structured activity and um, many different formats for participation available. So, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. So like what kinds of services do you, do you provide at B3 Coffee? Yeah, so I touched on some of them. Um, one that I didn't mention was our most recent offering, which is our library um, kiosk. So we recently opened a more permanent stand at our local public library, and this serves as a transitional employment model. Um, and it involves people with and without disabilities in an integrated format. So it's always a person without a disability, um, and a person with a disability working alongside each other, each in distinct roles. Uh, we really wanna avoid any kind of um, sensationalism or, um, I, I don't know, I feel like that's often what we see with inclusive coffee shops, but uh, with this no hierarchy model between people with and without disabilities, we're able to 
cultivate true empowerment. Um, and we hope that through the internship, our members are able to gain confidence and initial work experience um, to add to their resume. And then once they finish the internship, uh, the reason it's an internship is we don't want them to stay there forever. Um, we want them to move on um, and we do the best we can to assist them in obtaining long-term employment. Uh, so we have a variety of employment partners that we partner with to be able to refer our members to. And throughout the internship, we're assessing what their strengths are and support needs and um, interests for future work or volunteer opportunities. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's what I was going to ask. Like, um, what what are the kinds of stakeholders that you partner with closely? Yes. So importantly, disabled people are involved at all levels of our organization and leadership positions. Um, so that includes on our board of directors and uh, about half of our staff members. We also involve many allies to the disability community, many of whom are uh, students at our local university, UNC Chapel Hill. And then finally, we closely work with a variety of IDD, um, I'll spell that out, intellectual developmental disability focused nonprofits, um, such as Extraordinary Ventures, Part and Parcel, and Sea Wind Farm, all of which are inclusive employers. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So like, what kind of impact does your organization have on not just the disability community, but other communities as well. Sure. So first I'll just touch on the three values um, that B3 is centered around, which is what B3 stands for. So those are being, belonging, and becoming. Um, we appreciate diverse ways of being um, and just the natural variation of what it means to be human. We create spaces where everyone belongs and we strive to become better together. And by promoting these values within the community, we're really able to challenge those around us to join us um, as an ally or as a person with lived experience um, and to partner with us in our efforts to advance disability justice. B3 also proudly and actively recruits members from diverse subcultures of the local disability community to support our anti-racism efforts. And B3 offers pop-up coffee stands um, at a variety of community venues, as I mentioned. So we'll often go to churches or teacher appreciation days um, or different special events. And this really provides a platform of visibility um, for our members. And then, uh, as I mentioned, B3 partners with employers to encourage inclusive hiring. And we also do a lot of consultation with employers around accessible workplace practices. Mm -hmm. Cool. Lastly, um, how do you combat the stigma of like ableism from your perspective as an organization? Because I get there's like a lot of that in our society. So yeah, definitely. And, and definitely within the nonprofit realm, I see that a lot as well. Um, so B3 has really an accessible offering for everyone through both in-person and virtual experiences. Uh, many of our members involved in B3 um, live, you know, 20, 30 minutes away and experience transportation barriers. So for that reason, our online community has been really vital for us to expand access. Um, and I'd say overall, we've just established an organizational culture that really values interdependence and all of the key elements of the disability justice framework, um, which are critical to our, our impact. So. Also, I'd like to mention that B3 offers an allyship training curriculum. So this curriculum covers topics such as disability history, etiquette, language, current systemic issues, and the 10 principles of disability justice. Um, we really think it's important for non-disabled people to 
do the work of understanding disability culture and issues in order to claim allyship. Uh, because often what we see is disabled people are expected to do all the work in adapting to an inaccessible and ableist society. So uh, we think a lot of that uh, positive change toward disability justice can happen through allies being better informed um, and just in general more comfortable interacting respectfully with disabled people. So yeah, and then I think finally just our no hierarchy model is really important for combating stigma. Um, disabled people and non-disabled people really do have equal roles within B3. Um, the, for example, like at our transitional employment uh, model at the kiosk, it's never a situation where a non-disabled person is like the job coach or the manager. Um, they truly do work alongside each other in a collaborative dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those all those all those things that you said are important points there. 